Something that's happened in the last few weeks is that Parks on the Air now includes a lot of beaches listed, at least here in Australia. Basically, you can operate between the low and high water mark. And that increase in the number of beaches will really increase poacher activity because most Australians do live within, say, 30 or 40 kilometres of the coastline. And I'm pretty lucky in that regard. I'm only a few hundred metres from the one just here. Of course, it is summer and beaches can get pretty crowded and there are going to be often quite a few people around. So you have to be a bit mindful of that when setting up your station. And the antennas that you use, well, you might have to make a compromise between your space, the, the poles you have, the radials you have, and not getting in the way of other people. So I'm gonna talk about just a, a few antennas that you could use for beach operating that aren't going to get in the way of other people and dogs who might be on the beach as well. Well, first of all, antennas that aren't so good, even though they might be very effective as far as the signal they put out, horizontal antennas, horizontal dipoles. Uh, you might need to have two masts up and that can get in the way of people. So a horizontal dipole is probably not going to be ideal if you want to operate on the beach and have a small footprint, that is you, your transmitter, all the antennas just within a small amount of space on the ground, maybe only about a meter or two square. And that's pretty important if you're operating during peak season in the summer when there are a lot of people on the beach. Though, in terms of radio conditions, unless you're chasing activity on the higher HF bands, like for paths directly north, they are good in the middle of the day, but you might actually be better off going to the beach early in the morning when there's fewer people around or uh, later on, maybe even early evening. Um, and that might get you your longer distance DX contacts. Um, when you're following the gray line, that is sunrise or sunset. But anyway, let's get back to antennas. Um, horizontal dipole might not be so good. An inverted V, well, that might be okay. You've only got a single pole, but the problem is you need to tie it off somewhere else. Um, a couple of spots, you could use tent pegs in the sand, but often they are going to be a fair distance from where you're operating, which can be a problem on a crowded beach. You want everything to be in a small footprint. Another possibility is an inverted L. That is handy if you've got somewhere else you can tie the end of the antenna off, like the railings of a pier. You might be able to have it set up so that it's a long way away from anyone, no one can trip over anything, so that is a possibility. But overall, uh, the sort of antennas that you're probably going to have to be thinking of is a vertical. Um, vertical in the sand has a very small footprint and that is probably going to be a good option. The only problem with that is your radials. If you're going to be having radials like a quarter wavelength away, um, and it's particularly messy if the radials are elevated, which is often a good thing to do, then, yeah, that can be a problem as well. So you might have to have a small tuned counterpoise. I have had other videos demonstrating those sorts of antennas. Um, the counterpoise might only be about a metre long. There might be a series coil. You might tune it in with a variable capacitor, and that can work quite well. Uh, and the tuned counterpoise can just be at, say, right angle to your vertical radiating element. That can be okay. Uh, another possibility is a little uh, ground mat. I've made one out of aluminium foil wrapped in book covering, and it might only be like this long and this big. You, it may be desirable to use a ground tuning unit, maybe not, but anyway, something like that could provide a useful small counterpoise, which could be okay. Yes, there might be a bit of compromise in the signal levels that you put out, but especially if you use the alert system on um, parks on the air, then you should hopefully still be able to get the 10 contacts you need to activate the park. Another possibility, and that's what I'm gonna to try today, is pedestrian mobile. Uh, that's, uh, I'm gonna be using um, uh, the Wade Tenor I've got set up here. So I'll actually be standing up, I can, 
walk around as well, in fact even walking in the water and that can provide quite an efficient antenna with um, the, the counterpoise actually making contact with the salt water. And, and with the antenna, the vertical part is in, in the backpack. It, getting back to vertical antennas, um, around 3 16th of a wavelength is probably about the minimum you're going to use for reasonable efficiency. You could go to a little bit shorter, like 1 8th of a wavelength, but it's a good idea to have, say, a centre loading coil. And that's what I actually do with the Wade Tenor. It extends to about five metres. That's about the tallest I, I find that is okay in a backpack with a, a fishing pole like that. If you get more than five metres, especially if it's a little bit windy, then that's a bit unwieldy. So five metres, which is about one eighth of a wavelength on seven megahertz, um, for that to really work, a loading coil is, is good. And then you can switch that out for the other bands, the higher HF bands. Uh, in all cases, you need a small antenna coupler at the bottom to tune it in. All in other videos on my Wade Tenor. So that is a possibility. Very, very small footprint, of course, and you can walk around, help, whatever, um, especially if you're on a sandy beach. Um, another possibility, magnetic loops. Again, a very small footprint. Um, a magnetic loop about 90 centimeters in diameter will work on 7 megahertz. You might lose a bit of efficiency there, but it will work and it will probably operate all the way up to 28 megahertz. Uh, of course, we're near the top of the solar cycle, so you might be able to get away with avoiding 7 megahertz, even though 7 megahertz is the, here in Australia, is the top band for parks on the air. Way more contacts on 7 megahertz than anywhere else, at least in southeast Australia. But especially if conditions are good, you can still make contacts on, on other bands. And on the higher HF bands, then you can get away with using a smaller magnetic loop, maybe only 30 or 40 centimeters in diameter. That would be okay for 21 and 28 megahertz. See the summer loop to on my website, vk3y.com or in um, other videos that I've done. Um, and I've also described the bigger magnetic loop. So yeah, to, to sum up, um, there's certain antennas that are a bit harder to set up if you want a small footprint. They are horizontal wire antennas, good as they are, but they are a, a problem in trying to find all the supports without getting in the way of other people. Uh, some form of ground plane with radials, also not very good as people can trip over them. Um, if you've got a, a vertical, if it's near a half wavelength, then you can probably get away with a less of a, a radial system. Uh, I mentioned before a, a small tune counterpoise that would be okay. So to sum up, either a vertical or a magnetic loop or a vertical that's pedestrian mobile uh, are some antenna tips that I, I suggest if you're going to be operating on the beach where you don't want a big footprint because of other people crowding whatever and you can still often get quite good DX results. So I hope I've given you a few ideas. Let me know in the comments how you go with beach portable antennas and what's your favorite. F5PYI, uh, you are now five by five. Five by five, over. Roger, Roger, uh, Roger, many thanks for the 5x1, many thanks for the 5x1, uh, just running 5 watts, 5 watts QRP, 5 watts QRP, and I'm walking along the beach. Uh, Fox 5, Papa, Yankee, India, VK3, Yankee, Echo, over. Thank you.
Do you want to get the most from your portable QRP operating? Good Antennas is a great place to start. Find out how I succeed with my two books, Hand Carried QRP Antennas and More Hand Carried QRP Antennas. The big sellers with favourable reviews from all around the world. To learn more, visit vk3ye.com or search the titles on Amazon.